Hi everyone, my name is Ge Li and our paper is titled Cost Effective Data Labeling for Graph Neural Networks, which we study the active learning problems on graphs. So this is a joint work with Shishun Huang from University of Kulongong, me and Jifong Bao from RMIT University, and Suri Pan from Griffith University. So for a little bit of background, graph neural networks are powerful in graph-based tasks like node classifications and link predictions. And in order to train powerful graph neural networks, um, it requires a large number of label nodes. And in order to obtain that, it requires um, expensive manual labelings um, to get from, uh, from the human experts. So an important research question to ask is how to select limited data for labelling to maximize the model performance. So we study the active learning problem, which is a cost-effective strategy for labelling limited training data samples to train ML models effectively. So more formally, um, for active learning, given the loss functions and a training node set without label nodes, active learning aims to select an optimal seed set with B budgets um, from the training node sets to label, such that the lowest loss on the testing set is achieved by training the algorithm M with the label seed sets only. Um, so existing active learning strategies mainly focuses on a supervised or semi-supervised strategy. And there are three drawbacks behind this. Um, so for the first, they assume prior knowledge of the gen and to be used, which is um, impractical in some scenarios where the gen and is unknown during the seed selections. And for the second, they involve gen and in the active learning process, which is costly. And thirdly, it requires um, initial label data to warm up the model. So we propose our unsupervised strategy, which does not involve graph neural networks during the active learning seed selection process, and it is scalable and flexible. So our objective is to propose scalable, flexible, and unsupervised active learning methods. So by scalable, it means that our methods should, be, should have low memory footprints with low time cost, and by flexible, our model can be used with different gen and models in the downstream task, like node classifications. And by unsupervised, our model, uh, our methods does not require initial label nodes to warm up, prior knowledge of the specific gen n, as well as the label of newly selected nodes to guide future selections during the seed selection process. So um, the main performance of the graph neural networks depends on mainly depends on how well the feature transformation matrices are trained. And in order to do that, we cast the active learning problem to what we call the aggregation involvement maximizations, AIM problems. And based on this, we propose effective and efficient solutions to solve these AIM problems. And we'll discuss the rationale behind these um, formulations. Since um, the primary tra uh, trainable parameters in the gen and are uh, feature transformation matrices, um, we need to select those um, nodes such that we can promote diversity um, in the distribution of the aggregated features among the selected seeds. And although different um, gen ends, although gen ends are different in how they aggregated features from neighborhoods, they all require to train transformation matrices, which the quality depends on the diversity of the selected seeds. So to ensure compatibility with various gen and use, even if we don't know the specific gen and during the seed selection process, we would like to um, diversify the aggregation neighborhoods, which implicitly maintains the diversifications of the aggregated features. So here we have two examples. In the left one, we have node F and C as the seeds, and we can see that the aggregation features are quite similar because of the, uh, the aggregation neighborhood are very similar as well. So choosing node C and G as the seed in the right-hand graph is a better solution because the aggregated um, neighborhoods are more diverse and hence the aggregated features are also diverse no matter which gen and will be used in the downstream task. So now we would like to quantify neighborhood diversifications um, based on nodes involvement and we refer this to as total aggregation involvement. So total aggregation involvement of selecting seed S is the total direct and indirect scores. And we'll explain this in details later. So now we can define the AIM problems, which is given a fixed labeling budget B 
we aim to find a seed set um, of B nodes such that the total involvement score is the maximum. So for direct aggregation involvements, um, the aggregation neighborhood of a seed set S is the set of nodes which are within K hops away from the seed S. And a node has direct aggregation involvements if it is within the aggregation neighborhood of the seeds. So let's say, for example, in the graph of one hop, if we select G and C, the red nodes as the seeds, the nodes in the green, which are within one hop away from the seeds, are the directly involved nodes. So the number of directly involved nodes refers to the um, direct involvement score. So now we define indirect involvement based on what we call the involvement-based similarity. And we use the nodes outside of the aggregation neighborhood of the seeds to estimate its diversifications. So the indirect involvement of a node V is positively related to the relationship between V and the nodes in the aggregation neighborhood of the seeds S. And we refer this relationship as um, involvement-based similarity. So let's say in this example, if you are choosing between E and B, so E will be a better solution since it can better increase the total nodes involvements. And if you look at B, the um, aggregation neighborhood of B, which is C and D, have high indirect involvements. And for node O, it even has overlap with the aggregation neighborhood of A. So here we would like to diversify and choose E, which has um, uh, higher um, nodes involvements. So now we define the involvement-based similarity. So H denotes the as of sets of nodes which are within certain hop away from V. And the intersection between H and the aggregation neighborhood of S are called um, relevant nodes of V. So we define the similarity between V and aggregation neighborhood of S as the sum of similarities of all relevant pairs. So here the pairs, um, the relevant nodes would be J and N in the third bullet points. And the sum of similarity between all relevant pairs would be J and not V or N, uh, M and not V. So now we can define the indirect involvement scores. And here we incrementally update the definition of the score. So with three considerations. So here for the first considerations, we would like to diversify the neighborhoods, which we would like to encourage to choose seats whose aggregation neighborhoods are close to nodes with low indirect involvements. And because the same involvement similarity score increment may have different impacts on the node involvement scores, even if the node involvement scores are similar, we would like to consider, um, we will have the second consideration, which we would like to capture the significance of um, pairwise distribution um, based on distribution uniformity instead of the uh, um, absolute values. And for the third um, considerations, since previous formulations do not consider the maximum possible um, involvement-based similarity that a node can achieve, um, we would like to normalize these similarities with a uh, normalization factor NF, such that each unit of similarity can um, br brings noticeable um, involvement score. So for our solutions, um, theoretical analysis, we have proven that the ARM problem is MP hard and the objective is monotone and submodular. And we adopt the greedy algorithm, which iteratively selects the nodes with the maximum marginal gains of scores and it produces solutions with an approximation guarantee. And we have proposed two greedy methods. The first one is naive greedy with V square time cost. So V refers to the number of nodes and we have another more advanced strategy, which is greedy ET with early termination, which significantly speeds up the knife greedy methods. So for the experiment setup, we have six different data sets of different skills for node classification task. And for methods with comparison, we have four different methods and two versions of green. And also for general models, we have considered four models which is used to um, evaluate the performance of the methods. And we use the GCN as the default model. So for experiment results, we have conducted six experiments. So for the first two are uh, the accuracy comparisons and the time cost comparisons. 
So for the accuracy comparisons, our methods, Grady AT can achieve up to around 20% um, higher accuracy against the baselines. And also for the time cost, it can save, um, it has up to five orders of magnitude speed ups. And for the third experiments, um, which is the memory cost comparisons, our methods can save up to 100 times of memory space against the baselines. And for the uh, remaining um, experiments, we have the flexibility test, which we evaluate our methods under different gen ends, and our methods consistently outperform baselines under different gen ends. And for consideration studies, we perform ablation study which we have different considerations that we develop. And for the last experiments, we have hyperparameter study, which we evaluate the impact of the hyperparameters in our methods. So um, for the summary, we have tackled the active learning problem by reformulating it as the aggregation involvement maximization problems. And we propose unsupervised, scalable, and flexible methods with theoretical guarantees. And we conduct extensive experiments which demonstrate the efficiency, effectiveness, scalability, and flexibility of our methods. Yeah, um, that is all, and I'm happy to take any questions.